Bill O'Reilly goes on Fox and Friends, and one of the most shocking aspects of the story is that one of them actually made sense. It was not Bill O'Reilly. They were talking about Maxine Waters. Uh, I love the way that Maxine Waters turned uh, this whole uh, idea around about how we're more American, not you. You guys don't believe in the Constitution. I've said this a thousand times. Conservatives like an authoritarian form of government. They don't like democracy. Uh, they there's so many parts of our Constitution they just simply don't believe in. Anyway, so she's talking about policy. Listen to what Bill O'Reilly is going to say instead. Watch. We stand up for America, oftentimes when others who think they are more patriotic, who say they are more patriotic, do not. When we fight against this president and we point out how dangerous he is for this society and for this country, we're fighting for the democracy. We're fighting for America. We're saying to those who say they're patriotic, but they turned a blind eye to the destruction that he's about to, to cause this country. You're not nearly as patriotic as we are. So what does that mean, Bill? We've been listening all morning. We cannot I, I didn't any. hear a word she said. I was, <laughs> I was looking at the James Brown wig. <laughs> if, if we have a picture of James, it's the same. It's the same one. No, right. And he's okay. not using it anymore. They just, on you guys are all, you're all wrong. I have this. to defend her on that. She's a, you can't go after a woman's looks. I think she's very attractive. But she, I didn't say she wasn't attractive. Her I hair? love James Brown. But it's okay. the same hair James exactly. Brown, are the godfather of soul, had. So he had girl hair. Uh, whatever it is, I just couldn't get by it. <laughs> so what does that mean that they're more patriotic? That's crazy. They're not even white. How's that possible? Hey, let's talk about her hair. That's really funny. Now, credit to Ainsley Earhart there, who actually was a rare voice of reason, maybe a unique voice of reason ever in Fox and Friends history. But of course, kill me. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Him with the empty eyes. Anyway, uh, by the way, later in the conversation, uh, kill me said, uh, oh, yeah, about James Brown. They just finally buried him. James Brown passed away in 2006. <laughs> Just random, total non-factual things in the middle of Fox and Friends as they do. There was a big dispute over something before they could bury him. And then so it was actually a really bad situation where it took a while, longer than the normal time frame, to bury him because of disputes over whatever was going on with his, with yeah. his estate or something. But it was really sad. So actually to in, then evoke the drama that went around his death is even more distasteful. If you're thinking, hey, look, this wig thing is... I mean, it's a stupid joke, but it's not that big a deal. No, you got look. There's a certain way that they treat uh, African Americans and uh, specifically African American women. Now, I know if you if you haven't seen it with your own eyes, you're gonna go, oh, "Come on, Jank, it's just a stupid wig joke." That's not true. Okay, so hear me out now. In fact, I want you to hear uh, conservative commentators out. So, on the same legislator, Maxine Waters, U.S. Congresswoman. Now let's go back to 2012 and look at Eric Bowling and what he said to her about her on Fox News. How's this? The Congresswoman, you saw what happened to Whitney Houston. Step away from the crack pipe. Step oh. away from the Xanax. Oh. 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 Step oh. away oh. from the hey. ways of brand because drugs. it's going to get you in trouble. I, how will she explain those kinds of things? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> uh, of course, how else do you explain an African American legislator? But references the crack pipes and James Brown wigs. Uh, and if you're saying, no way, man, this is all great, man. It's just a wild coincidence that she happens to be black and they're talking about crack pipes and James Brown wigs. And that's nothing wrong with that at all. You know who doesn't agree with you? Bill O'Reilly, because he just apologized. He said, as I've said many times, I respect Congresswoman Maxine Waters for being sincere in her beliefs. I said that again today on Fox and Friends, calling her quote, old school. Unfortunately, I also made a jest about her hair, which was dumb. I apologize. So very good for Bill O'Reilly apologizing. I appreciate that. I think a lot of people do. Uh, and and you know, I wish they would focus on what she was actually saying. But of course, they don't want to do that because she's very right about how progressives represent real American values and 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 conservatives don't and often run from those values. Now, uh, if you're thinking, well, I mean, it's just a one off. They really don't like Maxine Waters. No. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of clips here. First, we're going to show you Alex Jones uh, on Michelle Obama. So, notice the consistent theme uh, African American women aren't really women. And this is a trope from a long time ago. And no matter how much you say racism is in the past, it keeps popping its head back up. 
Listen to his long diatribe about how she's actually a man, watch. Now, 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 let me go ahead and show you this. This is the two ladies, and we've had doctors on about this. Her shoulders are too wide. She's on like the 100th percentile of women, okay, with her body type. Her arms, everything, she always has this pooch, like she's wearing either a cod piece or has genitalia, okay? Now, she looks like a man. Like, dude looks like a lady, lady looks like a dude. And this is a funny cartoonist, Ben Garrison, who they're always calling racist and bad. And I mean, I'm sorry, it's true. It's a giant viral video phenomenon for like eight years that she's a man. All I know is Obama was raised by a tranny in Indonesia. They're into all sorts of stuff. Mainline liberal sites think she's a man, okay? You know, there's all those videos where Obama keeps calling well, Michael here, I mean, Michelle, hey, uh, Michael, I mean, uh, uh, Michelle, come on over here. This is like some weird cult or something. I think Michelle Obama is a man. I really do. I really do. I believe it. Apologize for it later. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this, and our president listens to that madman. But look, all these conservatives for all these years, and by that I don't mean every one of you guys out there. You probably, a lot of you have no idea that this old racist trope has been around for centuries. But it has, and a lot of these commentators come out here and make these things, say these things over and over and over again about almost every African American woman. Things, I mean, we're talking about eugenics now. With, oh, she's in 100% of her body type. I don't know what that means. Her shoulders are too wide. Too wide by what margin? By whose standards? We've had doctors on here. Really? Really? You had doctors on InfoWars? <laughs> Boy, those must be class acts. Uh, but it, it, she, he's been studying it and she's got genitalia. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's such an idiot, doesn't even know what he's saying. Uh, no, it's true, it's true. Why, Alex? Uh, it's a viral phenomenon. People have been talking about it, even mainline liberal websites. Really, which ones? But they put this out there because they're questioning their humanity. Look, I've, I've got the results of that in a second, but go ahead, Jeff. I mean, the apology from Bill O'Reilly is a simple sweeping. It was dumb. So he, there's, there's something where he says negative about himself. He's like, it was dumb, so it's okay, right? I don't accept apologies unless you understand what it is you did and how it affects. You have this large audience. How it affects the thought processes of many of people in the country. So, I mean, there's a video you may be getting to, but then Trump supporters out. They yeah. repeat the same things that Alex Jones did. We'll probably get to it. But when you don't understand what you've done or you don't care to explain why you're wrong, you haven't done anything. All you've done is said, I'm sorry, and your supporters go, oh, yeah, they forced him to apologize. Those strong arm liberals again. They keep controlling our, our, our strong leaders like Bill O'Reilly and Sean Hannity. So it doesn't really get to the problem. It continues to, to perpetuate the same thing we had. We did the studies about how kids, black kids are considered older than they are, so then police can beat their ass more. Or then we see how police uh, uh, actually go after women a lot of times, and we go, how are they gonna snatch this girl at the Texas party around like this? And then a grown woman around like this, they don't see them as women, or as maybe someone who isn't gonna attack them, just someone who's stronger than them, who's more aggressive than them, who's a beast. And this is perpetuating that. Until he understands that, I don't accept his damn apology. Why? Why even? Why they even come up with this hundreds of years ago? And why does it still persist today? Because the black person is dangerous. So if it's a young African American boy, no, he's older than he appears. No, he's taller than he appears. These are all studies, even to this day, and 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 it's so widespread that it gets into everybody's heads. Even African Americans sometimes identify. African American kids as uh, older or taller. Now they don't. They when they, they continue the studies, they don't discriminate against them because of that. Unfortunately, white people then say, on average, they're more dangerous. And so, if you're you're not feminine, you're masculine, you're more dangerous. So, and and you think, well, maybe I'm not going to act that way. Okay, I hear you, and I hope you're right about that. And 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 I think that most people don't. But do some people act based on that? Of course, are some of them in authority? Yes. Are some of them your neighbors? Yes. So here's Eric Byler, uh, produced for the Young Turks. During the campaign, he was talking to a Trump supporter. He was asking about Michelle Bachman. This guy starts kind of going on a rant on Michelle Obama. So <laughs> that's where we pick it up here. Let's watch. I, I don't. I don't believe in her. I don't believe in Michelle. I think Michelle is just honest, just like her old man's just honest. And I don't even believe Michelle's a, a woman. I believe she's a man. Michelle Bachman? Yes. Not Bachman. You said. 
Michelle Obama. You don't think Michelle Obama is female? I believe she's man. She had two daughters. They're adopted. But they look just like them. They, they take when you get adopted, they, they, they try to make you look like the person that you're being adopted. They live among us, man. And so what I try to get you guys to do is sometimes just think about it. What if the shoe's on the other foot, right? So what if there was millions of people in the country who had insane theories on who you are and what you're all about and they're completely wrong, but they're threatened by you and they're on their guard about you. And I'm not just talking about Michelle Obama. You know, that extends to what they think about African American women overall, what they think about African Americans overall. There's millions of guys out there like that. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, of course he's a she's a man. She's a man. Yeah. Oh, their adoption, they made him look like that. It's, of course, obviously. How could you not know that? So if you don't think it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. A lot of people do think it. Where did they get it from? They got it from the Alex Jones and the Bill O'Reilly's of the world. So for God's sake, we have got to get past it. But the way to get past it is not to ignore it, but to point it out and make sure it doesn't happen. These again. are the jury of your peers, that guy in the last video. So it trickles down to this thought process where they can end up deciding people's fates, which they've been doing since the beginning of our country. They decide people's fates based off of their the lies they're told by people they believe are telling them the truth. Last thing, Carl Palladino, who ran for uh, governor in New York after the Obamas were done and the term was up, uh, he's talking about Michelle Obama, what he's looking most forward to. I'd like her to return to being a male and let loose in the outback of Zimbabwe, where she lives comfortably in a cave with Maxi the gorilla. Uh, he ran for governor of New York, New York State, you know, that big liberal bastion. Uh, where all these assholes live. Um, and he also went on to say, there's nothing to do with race, it's about two progressive elitist ingrates who've, ha who've ha hated their country so badly and destroyed its fabric in so many respects for eight years. It has nothing to do with race, it's just a guy talking about a couple of people, a couple politicians, or a politician and his wife, how much he hates them because they've destroyed the country. If you don't understand how racism exists, it doesn't have to be in the forefront of your brain going, yeah, those are black people, I hate them. It's just, it's so ingrained in you, you don't realize everything you think about black folks is related to, to animals and danger and must be destroyed. He went on to talk about how he wants Obama dead and Valerie Jarrett buried next to him. All it is is death, get them away from me, get them off my planet, because they don't deserve to live. These are the people you're supporting. And Little you know, Roddy's one of them. Remember how crazed he was? He went to Harlem. Oh my God, they didn't say MF or bring me some iced tea. He was surprised because that's his normal thought process. That was I don't accept your damn apology. Yeah, because O'Reilly expected that when he went to Harlem and he'd gone there with Al Sharpton on that one time, uh, he thought they're gonna be savages, but they didn't yell mother effer in the middle of the restaurant at all times. And he was genuinely shocked by that. And thought he was complimenting them by saying, wow, they have lunch like civilized people. Look at the mindset and you still think it's not racial. And maybe it's because you think that because it's not racial for you. But it is racial for a lot of people. And to Jared's point about New York, you think, oh, it's only in the South, it's only in pockets of racism, but I don't live there. No, O'Reilly's from New York, Paladino's from New York, Donald Trump is from New York. And look at what Donald Trump did with the Central Park Five. He said, oh, they've gotta get executed, they gotta get the death penalty. It turns out they were innocent. They're proven innocent many years later, decades later. Donald Trump still says, no, I don't care that they were proven innocent. I still think they should be in jail. Why, five black guys, I mean, come on. But it turns out it wasn't the five black guys who did it. It doesn't matter who did it. The black guys are guilty under all circumstances. If you think it's not out there, you're kidding yourself. Unfortunately, it is so prevalent in society. And you hiding from it or running from it doesn't help at all. The real resistance is fighting against Trump and the establishment. Help us get investigative reporters that are gonna investigate both of them. TYTnetwork.com slash go.